So I've been working on the $30 bench for about three months now, and honestly, I love it. It handles everything that I've thrown at. Faces, edges, sawing, boring, it's all good. But if I'm honest, this bench does have two shortcomings. Pretty much any time I'm working on a small part or something that needs to come in and out of the work holding over and over again, I always end up just clamping a hand screw down to the bench top and pretty much using that as a vise. The other problem is the notch vise, which is right down here. And this simple cutout in the bench really works as a vise. You grab your piece of wood, you pound in a wedge, and it's held rock solid. But it's not exactly easy to use. Anytime I want to work on the end of a board, I get my workpiece, I get a wedge, I have to pick the right one, then I have to pick a spacer usually. I have to arrange all this stuff together and pound down on the wedge, hoping that my workpiece will end up at the correct height. If I get everything right, then I can work all around my workpiece from any angle I want, and it's held perfectly. And then I can take it out, which honestly takes a little bit of work too. And the thing that's happened to me a lot of times is I'm going to look at the work I just finished and I think everything's great and then... Son of a bit of an inconvenience when that happens. So I think we should take an afternoon and just give this bench advice. So to understand what we're going for here, let's take a look at this commercially made vise screw because it's got all the parts that we're gonna need to fabricate for our vise. Obviously, any vise screw has a threaded section and a nut that allows the whole thing to be tightened and loosened. But up here on the user end, we also have this piece that's often called the garter. And the garter can rotate freely on the shaft, but it's locked in place from end to end and it can't move back and forth. On this side, closest to the user, we have the hub. You can slide a stick through here to act as the handle, but the hub also pushes on the garter and allows the vise jaw to close when the screw is tightened. On the other side of the garter, we have this piece that we might call the keeper, and it does the opposite thing. When the vise screw is loosened, the keeper pushes on the garter from the opposite side, allowing the vise jaw to be pulled open. So these are the parts that we're going to have to fabricate ourselves. To make our vise strong and also affordable, we're going to build it using this scaffold jack screw. This thing is solid steel, about an inch and three eighths in diameter, and it's got a very quick, strong Acme thread all the way up and down the length. And then the nut looks like some cheap cast material like zinc, but it's actually cast iron and it's very well fit to the threaded section. It's going to be perfect for this. And then on this end, we have this flat plate that's welded on securely. This has all of the components that we'd have a really tough time fabricating in the home shop. And then stuff like the garter and the hub, we can make out of wood without too much trouble. The first thing we're going to do is turn our jack screw into a vise screw. We'll start by making the hub. Take three pieces of six inch square hardwood and laminate them together. Set these aside so the glue can dry while we do the metal work. To do the metal work on this project, you're going to need a hacksaw, a small file, a selection of drill bits, and a countersink. These are common, inexpensive metalworking tools that you're probably going to use a lot if you continue to make things. Now's a good time to invest in them. I've put links to all of these tools, including the jack screw and the other products I'm using, in the description. Now the flat plate at the end of the jack screw is going to make a great basis for our hub, but right now it's too big. We need it to be no more than six inches wide in any direction. So we'll make a quick holder by cutting a V-shape into a 2x4 and clamping the hold down screw to the bench while we cut off the corners of the plate with the hacksaw and clean them up with a file. The end result doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to be a little bit smaller. Once you've got the end plate cut to size and cleaned up, you're going to need to drill four holes that we'll later run screws into. I found these inexpensive hex shaft drill bits. These are going to work in pretty much every bit brace and they cost less than $10. Just like cutting through this plate, drilling through it isn't very difficult, and it shouldn't take you very long. The threaded section of the screw shaft has one part that's crimped to keep the nut from coming off, but we're going to need that nut to come off. So we're going to take the file and clean up those crimped threads. That's going to allow the nut to rotate off so that we can work on it directly. Position this nut under the bench about one inch from the edge. You might need to chisel out a little bit of wood from the underside of your bench. Mark the part of the wing that sticks out on the side of the bench, cut through that with your hacksaw, and clean it up with a file. When you're done, this nut should sit snugly up on the underside of the bench and be flush on one side. 
By now, the glue should be dry on our hub piece, and we can get to work on that. Square up the wood, and then mark lines across the corners. Saw these corners off, and plane everything smooth until you have a nice, even octagon shape. Use a marking gauge to lay out a line about a quarter inch in from all the front edges, and then plane a bevel down to that line. That's going to make the front edge of your hub smooth and make you unlikely to bang your knuckles or your knees against a sharp edge. You're also going to need to make a hardwood spacer to go in between the vise jaw and the jack screw plate. This is going to keep the screws and the metal of the plate from messing up your wooden vise jaws as it's rotated. I used a thin piece of hardwood for this, but you can also use plywood. Just cut it to the shape of your hub and then bore a hole in the middle. Now mine split while I was making it, but this didn't end up being a problem because I would have had to cut it in half anyway. I also had to widen the hole that I bored to account for the weld on the jack plate. Once your spacers are made, they can be countersunk and drilled, and screws can be run through the spacer, through the plate, and into the hub. Then you can bore through the hub with a one inch bit, add a length of dowel, and some caps screwed on to either end, and your hub and screw are complete. Now we can work on the jaws. We're going to start off with three pieces of hardwood. They're going to be as long as your bench is wide and about six and a half inches from top to bottom. I've got all the measurements and details on the plans, which are available on my website, or you can click the link down in the description. Whenever I'm doing identical pieces like this, I like to cut the first one, check it for length, and then use that as a template for cutting the other two. That way there are no mistakes and everything comes out exactly the same. If you can, it's really handy to have one of your jaw pieces be a little bit thicker than the other two. For my vise, I'm using a piece of one and a quarter inch cherry, and that's going to help the whole thing work better. It'll make way more sense in just a second. After I've got all the boards cut, I'm going to clean them and square them up with my new scrub plane. I made this out of a really inexpensive smoothing plane, and I made a video about it last week that you can check out. Once the boards are all clean, I have a rough corner on one of them, so I'm just going to use my scrub to turn that into a bevel. It's going to look nice, get rid of the rough wood, and also help the vise to stay out of the way for operations like sawing. Now you're going to temporarily attach your inner jaw to the bench and scribe the location of the nut. Then take it back off and pick a location for your guide dowel to go. This can go pretty much anywhere. It's good for it to be parallel to the screw hole and just make sure it's not going to hit the legs of your vise. Once you've got both of those holes laid out, I suggest clamping all three boards together and boring both the holes simultaneously. That's going to make sure you've got perfect alignment. Next we're going to make the keeper. That's the part that allows the jaw to be pulled open when you unscrew the vise. I'm going to use a thin-ish piece of hard maple. You can use any hardwood you have sitting around. I'll bore through the piece with the same two and a half inch bit I used to drill my screw hole. Then I'll sketch a hexagon around that hole, cut it out, drill through it in two edges, and split the whole thing in half. What I'm going to do is assemble this around the vise screw and then put screws through the edge so that it clamps down on that screw with a tight friction fit. Of course, you could take something like this and epoxy it around the screw, and that would be totally fine. But by putting it together with fasteners, we're going to allow our vise to be easily disassembled if we ever need to change or repair anything. And this is also why we used a thicker piece for the second piece of the outer jaw, because that way our keeper can sit in this recess right here, and it's underneath the jaw, so it's out of the way. As it rotates, it's not going to rub against the work, and it's not going to keep the vise from closing properly. You can attach the thick piece to the thinner piece of the jaw using any method you like. I'm just using screws here because it's quick. And finally, we're going to add our guide dowel and install it permanently. For that, I'm going to put some glue on it and then just wedge it in place. This is going to give us a super tough hold and we don't need to wait for the glue to dry because that wedge provides plenty of pressure. And to finish up our vise, we're going to drill some holes into the nut and screw it to the back of the inner jaw. Once that's done, all your vise parts are complete and you're ready to test install. Installing this vise is very straightforward. I started off with the two holes I had already drilled and ran fasteners into those. Then I did two more, a little bit lower down. And then to make absolutely sure I had the strongest hold possible, I screwed a little hardwood block to the underside of the bench and ran a screw into that too. And with those five fasteners, this thing is really, really solid on the bench. It's not going anywhere. Now I've got my vise assembly right here. I'm gonna thread this screw into the nut and guide my guide arm dowel into this hole. Screw the whole thing shut and then my vise assembly is complete. 
So now you've got your vise installed on your bench and you're going to be super excited to try it out. I'll bet you here's what's going to happen. You're going to start closing it and you're immediately going to think, ugh, I don't like the way this thing works. And it's probably going to have a lot of problems. For instance, you can see this one is racking really badly. Very wide opening here, very narrow opening over here. And it's really loose and floppy and wobbly as I'm moving it around. It's very unsatisfying to use. Homemade vices like this just need a little bit of fine tuning to work really well. So the first problem you might have is this screw is so long and it's only being held up here that the back end of the screw sags really significantly. That's going to make the vise close very roughly and it's going to make this jaw pop up. But watch what happens if I just apply a tiny bit of upward pressure. All of a sudden, the vise opens and closes much, much more smoothly and a lot of that rattle just immediately goes away. Now as far as racking goes, that's why we have the guide rod that we installed over on this side. And every vise is different. I've been experimenting with this one and I found that this guide rod, in order to work properly, needs a little bit of pressure inward from the side. So to fix both of these problems, I'm going to put a little block underneath this screw just to give it a tiny bit of upward pressure, especially when the vise is mostly closed. And I'm going to put another block next to this guide rod to provide a tiny bit of inward force. That's going to fix a lot of the racking problems and make the vise operate much, much more smoothly. Once your vise is well tuned, you should have gotten rid of that jitter and you should have a really smooth open and closing motion. Supporting the screw should also make the jaws line up vertically really nicely. But if it doesn't and your moving jaw still sticks up a tiny bit, just plane that thing smooth. Don't worry about it. Once you've got your guide post well tuned, you might actually find that the right side of your vise closes just a little bit before the left side. And then the screw, when it's tightened, draws that thing in just perfectly. This is probably the optimal way the vise could perform because that tiny bit of tension from the guide is going to make the vise hold very strongly and work really well. Now once our vise is nicely tuned up, we still have to learn how to use it. And this vise does function a little bit differently from some other vises you might have used before. So since this vise only has a screw on one side, it has some inherently uneven clamping pressure. This isn't a problem, but we have to work intelligently. For instance, if I wanted to work on a thin, narrow board like this one, and I put it in the vise over next to the guide rod and pulled it shut, it wouldn't be held well at all because there's no clamping force on that side of the vise. All I have to do is take this board and move it over next to the screw. Over there, there's all the clamping force you need and your board can be held rock solid. You've also got to understand that this vise will always have some tendency to rack. The jaws are always going to want to be a little bit out of parallel with each other. This isn't a problem and it can actually be an advantage in certain circumstances. So for instance, if I have a tapered board like this one that's thin on this end and thick over here, it's tough for me to take that over to my cast iron vise because that vise is so rigidly parallel that it really can't deal with tapered or out of square pieces. They're very hard to hold in a vise like that. But if I bring that same piece over to my wooden English pattern face vise, I can put the thick end by the guide bar and the skinny end over by the screw. When I tighten the vise, it naturally just wants to rack around that piece, covers all the surfaces and holds that board very solidly. This face vise design also gives us up to nine inches between the guide bar and the screw. And that's perfect for working on the ends of wide boards. If I have to work on the end of a board that's wider than nine inches, then I can just use the crochet and a clamp across the bench. And that works beautifully. And I should also mention one other detail that I just added to the bench. I find it very convenient if the handle is centered about halfway on the hub. That gives me basically two places that I can grab it and spin that thing really quickly. But occasionally, having the handle in that orientation leaves it sticking up where it gets in the way of my tools. So I just added a screw stuck to a little piece of dowel and drove that right through the center of the hub. Anytime the handle is sticking up and it's in my way, I just reach down and give that dowel a little twist and the handle drops right out of the way. I have all the clearance I need for my tools. It's a simple solution that makes the vise that much easier to use. So I know that as soon as I release this video, there's going to be a whole gang of armchair quarterbacks telling me, oh, you should have built a twin screw vise or a moxin vise or a leg vise or some other crazy vise that I've never even heard of. And listen, here's the thing. I built this vise for my bench and my work 
to overcome the shortcomings that I find when I'm using the $30 bench. So this vise is really good for small parts, narrow parts, ends of boards, and repeat operations. And that's really it, because everything else is already easily done on this bench. I'm really happy with the way this bench holds work, and I'm going to keep using the palm and the crochet and all the other work holding options that are already built in. Now, your bench and your work might be different, so if you need a different vise, well, build it. Now, if you'd like, I have a great set of plans available that you can click the link down in the description or go to rexkruger.com store where you'll also find more plans, t-shirts, hoodies, and other things that really support the channel. And while I'm talking about plans, I should mention that my patrons never have to pay for plans. They got these plans for free this morning, and they're going to keep getting free plans from me, just as my thank you. On a project like this, my patrons are especially important, because, for instance, on this project, I actually built an entire vise, soup to nuts, before I even turned the camera on. I had to prototype the entire thing to make sure it would work, so I wouldn't get into the middle of the build and realize that I had a catastrophic flaw in my design. I can only do stuff like this because of Patreon. I had to buy double the materials and spend an entire day prototyping this and working out the bugs. If I didn't have the extra financial support that I get from my patrons, that would be a crazy move. It would be a bad business decision. But my patrons make stuff like this make financial sense for me. And if you'd like to participate in awesome DIY builds like this, go over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and check out the exclusive content, early access, and rewards that I give only to my patrons. None of this would be possible without that. And before I go, in the interest of full disclosure, I'll tell you that I used a couple of power tools when I was making this vise. I tested every single operation with hand tools to make totally sure you could build it with the minimal Woodwork for Humans kit. But because I'm working on a tight timeline, I did some of the repeat operations with a cordless drill and a bandsaw. It's nothing I couldn't have done with hand tools, I just needed things to move on a little more quickly. And you can totally get this stuff done, even with very basic tools. I just wanted to put that out there because I would never want my viewers to think I'm being dishonest with them. My viewers are super important to me. And to everybody watching this video, thanks so much for watching.